press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Hello students, welcome back to your English class. We are going to continue around a medicinal creeper which we stopped uh, of Mara's true or false stories that we are yet to listen. Some he has said, some he has not. Uh, I hope and I am very pretty uh, sure that you have already read how much we have finished or those who are very curious have read what is uh, to be done today also. What is uh, Mara actually trying to tell us? Is he telling us stories that are true or are they false? Or sometimes you cannot decide what is true or what is false. What is Mara giving us a clue about? What kind of an indication does he gives up, give us? We are going to listen to few other stories of Mara as well. The narrator or the author is surprised listening to Mara's cock and bull stories. Now I gave you a reference of what cock and bull stories are. Do you really think Mara's stories are cock and bull stories? Or do they contain some kind of a truth? All that we'll find out today. But what is your uh, opinion? You must think for yourself now. What kind of an opinion have you uh, thought in mind about our character Mara? The amount of uh, story that we know or how much ever we have finished, we can categorize Mara in terms of being or cooking up stories, something like that. But was he a true man or is there something else that he was letting us know. We'll find out. We'll continue from page 19, not 19, 21. Okay, from page 21, and then uh, we'll see how much uh, of Mara we will know today. So follow your copies on page 21. I'll begin from the paragraph where I last stopped, and then we can continue. I will have to marry again. Let that be, but don't think that such a plan does not exist in our forest. He said and told me another story. Now the author and Mara were fighting. For what? For an experiment they had, that they had to do. Why? Mara had lost his teeth. Now the author tells, go and find something that can replace your teeth. Then he says, at least find something that can regain your youth. He says, if I get that youthfulness back again, I have to marry again. Marrying is not possible with me and I cannot marry again. It's once and it's over. And he tells certain things and he tells another story. Now we listen to another story of Mara. Long ago, Mara and a friend of his laid a trap and caught a barking deer. As they had to divide it equally between them, they took it near to the stream, skinned it, cleaned and divided the meat. Now they had laid a trap to catch what? To catch a, a barking deer. Now as they caught it, they had to equally divide between two companions, Mara and another companion of his. So they took it to a nearby stream that was flowing, they took out its skin, they cleaned the deer and divided the meat equally. They wrapped, their, they wrapped their portions in some leaves and dropped them home. Now they didn't have any bags like us. What did they do? They wrapped it around in uh, some leaves and uh, brought it home. In Mara's house, they got ready to cook. So Mara's house, Mara's wife is preparing uh, to cook the barking deer. They prepare the masala with spices, put the water to boil and open the packet to take out the meat. So masala is already put, all spices are mixed and the masala is done just uh, to uh, put the meat and boil it. Surprise of surprises. What's the surprise here? Instead of the meat, there was a wild buck. Wild buck is a male rabbit or deer. So instead of the barking deer, they had a wild buck. The moment it saw Mara, it jumped up and ran out of his house. So as soon as they opened the leaf, they had a wild buck and the moment it saw 
Mara standing, it ran out of the house. Who ran? The wild buck. When Mara was trying to catch it as usual, Mara's wife ignorantly took the leaves and threw it, them into the fire. So Mara was uh, trying to go and catch the wild buck and Mara's wife uh, who had prepared uh, the masalas there, she was ignorant. She didn't care for what Mara was doing or she didn't give any attention to uh, what Mara had to do. Anyway, the leaves that uh, Mara had wrapped it, what did she do? She took it and threw it in the fire. When I heard the story, I was speechless and did not ask Mara for any elaboration or explanation because this was the height of his inventive genius. Okay, elaboration is a detailed uh, explanation. So the author says, after I heard this uh, kind of a story, I didn't ask him for any further explanation because that was the height of his imagination, too much. That was somebody can cook up a story, but not to an extent that you make the other person unbelievable. So he says his uh, intelligence or his way of creative imagination was so genius that he could create such kind of a story. So, so the author says, I didn't ask him anything further. I didn't want to ask him because he will cook up another story. It is no wonder that the white man of Huli Hindalu was prepared to give him the entire estate in exchange of these wonder plants. So the white man at Huli Hindalu where uh, Mara had gone, that man, what did he say? I will give you my plantation if you show me this. But Mara couldn't. Why Mara couldn't? We'll know. But Mara couldn't. So the author says, I'm not surprised of why that uh, white man said that he'll give his entire plantation. Anyway, Mara is cooking up stories. Mara is uh, being like uh, something that you cannot believe what he says. People are there, isn't it like that? They can fool you anyhow. Anyway, they speak in such a way that you must believe that they are true. Okay, so Mara is speaking like that till now. The author resumes like that. Now it has been a long time since I sold that estate and Mara is also dead and gone. So the author has sold his estate and by then Mara has already passed away. It is difficult to dismiss all of Mara's stories as bunkum. Bunkum is nonsense. So he says, I cannot... Uh, delete Mara stories from my mind or I cannot keep it away saying that they are nonsense, saying that there is bunkum. Some little detail remains to bother your conscience. Some little, little detail remains to bother your conscience. He says, whatever Mara has told us and left the world, that is still pricking my conscience, that is still hurting me or that is, I want to know more information about it. Mara has told it in tits and bits. I want to gather all those pieces and make it better. I want to know the real truth of behind Mara's stories. The total disinterest that Mara showed in trying to argue with us or convince us for that matter or lie or tell the truth continues to bother us. So Mara, whenever Mara was asked, uh, what is it, what does it cure, Mara never told them, isn't it? Mara never gave full information. So Mara showed a lot of uh, lack of interest. Lack of interest was what Mara showed in order to argue. He didn't want to argue with people there. He didn't want to convince anybody for any matter of, uh, of the creeper any time. Or now what is bothering people here is the author along with the author, did Mara really tell the truth or was Mara lying all this while? After a long time, Mara's medicinal creeper was back in news. This time, I saw Apanna tying it to a nearby tree. I asked him whether he knew its uses. So, Mara's uh, stories had become bunkum for some time, like bogus for some time, unbelievable for some time. People never talked about it for a certain point of time. But again, Mara's stories came back when uh, the author saw Apanna tying uh, the creeper to a nearby tree. So. The author goes and asks him, what is the use of this creeper? He did not know. I believe if you squeeze the juice of these leaves, milk becomes hard, he said. So what did Aparna tell the author? I don't know properly, but if you squeeze the uh, juice of these leaves, the milk gets hardened. Now, um, I thought that probably the leaf of this creeper must be sour. 
When you squeeze something sour into milk, it spoils and curdles. Now this is true, isn't it? If you have a good packet of milk, squeeze some lime juice into it, your milk gets hardened and that's some sweets are prepared out of it. The curdled milk that is there. If you have not seen till now, just mix some a lime juice into the good, good milk. Okay, good packet of milk. It automatically starts to curdle. So, the uh, author thought, maybe the leaves were sour. The uh, taste of the lime juice as it is squeezed, not your lime juice. Okay, this, uh, the first raw extract what you get of the lemon. That is sour. That kind of a taste. So, the author thought, maybe those leaves are sour. And when you add anything sour into milk, then it curdles. So, he must thought, he thought it must be like that. I thought this was being mistaken for hardening of milk. I asked Aparna, have you seen it happen? So the author is still curious now, even after Mara has left. He asked Aparna, have you seen it, uh, have you seen the milk getting hardened? Or have you seen the milk getting curdled? This is what people say. Where can I find milk for all such experiments? He replied. So people are saying this. I don't have, uh, where can I get milk? I don't have so much of money to simply waste my money and bring milk and do this kind of an experiment. Who said? Aparna said. Is there any basis for stories that are spread about these plants and herbs? I wondered whether I should squeeze the leaves into milk and see what happens. Now, the author is in such a confused state, he doesn't know what he has to do, whether he has to believe people or whether he himself has to experiment and see, does the milk really harden? He says, I have heard a lot of stories, people are spreading out each other. Now, I will squeeze it myself and see if the milk gets hardened. Instead of criticizing, okay, disapproving of anything, others for not knowing, I thought it would be better to check it out on my own. Now, he has set on an experiment to check whether the milk gets hardened or no. I plucked, plucked is removed. I plucked some leaves from the creeper and took them to my friend Chandru, who is a plant pathologist. Okay, I told him what I had heard about this plant. Now, he took it to Chandru. Uh, pathologist is a person who examines the cause of death. So, uh, he took it there. He was a person there, friend, his friend, whose friend? The author's friend, Chandru. I told him about this plant that Aparna had told him about. We decided to conduct the experiment and bought a liter of milk. Now they wanted to do the experiment, so what did they go? They went and bought a liter of milk. The other scientist friend laughed at us. They said that we were wasting a good liter of, uh, a liter of good milk, listening to all kinds of cock and bull stories. So the other scientist friends who were there, they considered this to be bunk. They said they laughed at Chandru and the author saying that you are wasting a good liter of milk instead of listening to all cock and bull stories, listening to all nonsense stories of people. Once we had decided to the, play the fools, we wouldn't care less about others laughing at us. So the author said, let, even if I have to make a fool out of myself, let it be, let others laugh, but I want to see what this experiment gives us and what it does. So we put the milk and leaves into a mixer and switched it on. After they were thoroughly mixed, we poured it out onto a, into a vessel. So they have uh, mixed it in the mixer now, the milk and the leaves. And then they, after the uh, mixing is done, they put it in a vessel. We watched for some time to see whether it would become curdled or remain as it was. So now they are waiting for their result. Result of what? The milk getting hardened. Nothing happened for a couple of minutes. Just as I decided that we had indeed wasted a liter of milk, I touched it again. It had become firm and rubbery. Now the author was thinking, uh, the other scientist friends were laughing at them, that they were true, uh, saying that we are wasting a liter of good milk. But he wanted to confirm back again whether he was really wasting it or no. So he went on to touch that milk. What did he find? Firm and rubbery. You just uh, mix a little raw extract of lemon 
to milk and see how it gets curded. It becomes sticky, becomes rubbery. If the milk gets spoiled, too much of uh, oily uh, feeling on your hand. Same thing happened over here. When we inverted the vessel, the whole thing fell out like a molded cast. Now, suppose this is a vessel that they have, they inverted the vessel to uh, put it down. How did it come? Like a molded cast. Have you seen, uh, now if this is, uh, okay, it came down like this, like a molded cast when they inverted what? Inverted the vessel. So then this creeper had some qualities. Now the author got confirmed that this creeper has some qualities. Now it was our turn to wonder. Now they started to realize, oh, whether the Mara was really true, did Aparna uh, say something that was really interesting to us? Aparna said because people are saying, he truly didn't know. He had heard stories from somewhere else and that rumor was what he conveyed to the author. But what Mara was telling at that time, now you cannot go back and ask Mara because Mara is not there. So now the author is wondering, see he told it's still pricking my conscience. Now this is also pricking his conscience. Who shall he ask? We'll see. But the problem was that despite all of this, we didn't know which disease or diseases it cured. So they didn't know, now they've got their result that the milk gets hardened through the, these leaves. But where can you use it? Which kind of a disease can you cure out of it? That they didn't know. Though no one seemed to know, just like Mara, all and sundry used to go around try, tying this creeper to the nearest plant and muttering, stay here. Now no one knew the exact reason. Even Mara didn't know. Mara was simply uh, saying that you have to tie it every rainy season. It will come and then it will disappear. All and sundry is everyone. All right used to go around doing what? Tying this creeper. Whoever saw the creeper just went on to tie it around the tree, not knowing the exact reason. But all listening to here and there, stories here and there. And what they used to say, after they have tied the creeper, they used to say, stay there, stay here, don't move. Because Mara, what did he say in the beginning? He said, that's the thief. Thief because you, it will disappear the next. That's a curse also by a sage, isn't it? Whenever you need it, you won't find it. I had never seen actually, I had never seen anyone actually go back to untie it and take it home for some ailment. Ailment is disease. So the author says, everybody kept on tying it, but nobody went and untied it and took it home to cure any kind of a disease. That I never saw. But everybody was saying it's a thief and tying it to a tree and saying stay there. But nobody said come here, come with me, I'll take you home. No, nobody said. He said, I'm not seen anybody like that. Okay, muttering is something that you are very, uh, uh, sometimes when you are angry, isn't it? When you are angry and uh, you are simply speaking within yourself, where it's not a loud noise or a loud sound that you give. Simply muttering inside. Okay. Time passed and once again I forgot about Mara's medicinal creeper. Now it had come and then again Mara's stories went in vain. So the author also started to forget it. The other day, my erstwhile farmhand Krishna came to me. Erstwhile is farmer or until recently somebody who was working uh, for you but that is no, he is not there with you anymore. Not anymore meaning not dead and gone but not associated with you. So farmhand Krishna came to me. One of the members uh, who was helping in the estate, Krishna was his name. He came to whom? I mean, to meet the author. He was perfectly healthy the last time I had seen him, but now he was standing before me pale and breathless. So the last time the author saw Krishna, Krishna was very healthy, very fit and fine. But today when the author was seeing him, he was very pale, very breathless. Pale is very dull. Now if you have fever, if you have fever and cold together, how does your face look? Your face looks very dull, isn't it? You are not able to breathe properly, you have a headache, you have everything in your body you feel very tired. That first two days of fever is very tiring, isn't it? Same thing our Krishna also looked like. 
he had stopped working in the estate some time ago and was driving a rickshaw. So he stopped working with the author just some time ago and he had started to uh, drive an auto rickshaw. Apparently, when he changed his job, he started passing blood with his stools. So after he uh, uh, left the estate and went to uh, drive an auto rickshaw, he started uh, passing blood with his motion that was there. Now it had become more serious and he was tired, breathless and wheezing. Out of that uh, blood that was passing with his stools, he felt very pale, very tired, fatigue always, breathless and he was wheezing, he gasping for air, okay. I thought he must be having piles, okay. Piles are painful uh, swollen veins near the anus. As far as I knew, the only allopathic treatment for piles was surgery. So what is the treatment uh, that the author knew? Allopathic treatment was surgery for his kind of a um, problem, disease. I felt sorry for this man who used to work hard to earn a living. Now the author feels very pity because this was a very hard working man. Who is that man? Krishna. Krishna was a very hard working fellow. With a wife and small children at home, I wondered how he could manage expensive surgical treatment at the hospital which meant several days of hospitalization and so lack of work and income. Now, if he was to take the surgery or if he had to go and take a treatment and uh, even do the surgery, he will have to stay in the hospital for some days. He has a wife there at home, he has children at home and he is the only earning member of the family, the breadwinner of the family. So if he is going to take the surgery and if he is going to stay in the hospital, hospitalization, that's to stay in the hospital, what's going to happen to his wife and children and how will he afford such an expensive surgical treatment was uh, the author's notion. Because if he stays in the hospital, that means he'll have lack of income, no work, he'll have to take care of himself and he cannot right away get back to work also, he'll have, he'll have, he'll have to have rest for his body and where will the money come from? Where will the income of the family come from? He took some, some money from me and went to the hospital. The doctors there advised him surgery. Krishna was scared. Now he took some money from the uh, author and he uh, went to the doctor. And the doctor said you have to do surgery. But Krishna got very scared. He was very uh, fearful with what he had to do. Krishna knew a Malayali sadhu. This god man had treated Krishna on an earlier occasion when Krishna had started developing boils all over his body. Now Krishna knew of a Malayali sadhu who was there and this man uh, had cured Krishna earlier also when Krishna had got some boils on his body. The god man had given Krishna the bark of some tree which he was supposed to crush and mix with ducks eggs and eat. Earlier when he had uh, his boils over his body, he had to take the bark of the tree. What's the bark of the tree? Imagine this is the tree, one small piece over here, okay. Bark of the tree, bark of the tree and do what and mix with ducks eggs and eat, crush this mix with ducks eggs and eat, you must remember this okay, which he was supposed to crush and mix with ducks eggs and eat. The full course of the treatment was how many days, 10 days, so 10 days for boils. It seems Krishna had been completely cured and after the treatment he never got a boil again. So after the 10 days of treatment of mixing the bark with the ducks eggs and eating it, Krishna was cured of his boils and it never came back to him again. Krishna went to see the god man again. Now the god man had become too old. So this Malayali sadhu, when Krishna went to approach him again, he was too old for his age now. Apparently he told Krishna that he did not have the strength to search for the plant, but that he would describe it. Krishna had to search for this plant, dig out the tuberous roots, mix it with milk and drink for medicine for five days. Now the Malayali sadhu says, I am an old man now, I can't go and find the creeper or I can't go and find the plant, but what I will do to you, I can describe it. You go and find it out, take out uh, the tuberous root that is there 
mix it with milk and drink it for 5 days. What is tuberous root? Like our uh, potatoes. Okay. Okay. Like this. He had to take this uh, tuberous root and do what? Take one of these tuberous roots, mix it with milk and drink this medicine for 5 days. This he had to do for 10 days. This he had to do for 5 days for the present problem that he had. The next day I saw Krishna looking for this medicinal creeper. Now what is Krishna doing? He was looking for this particular uh, medicinal creeper that the Malayali Sadhu had described to him. When I listened to his description, I was sure that he was looking for the same creeper which Mara and Aparna had tied to the nearest tree. Now the same creeper Mara had tied when? When they were erecting bamboo uh, canes there for the coffee seed bed. Second time when he saw Aparna, both were, both were tying the same medicinal creeper. This Malayali Sadhu also who had described, uh, also described the same medicinal creeper to whom? To Krishna. Now the author uh, correctly knew what uh, Krishna was searching, so he took him there to wherever uh, that plant was. I took him to the plant. We had to dig quite a bit to get the tuber, tuberous roots, like our potatoes, okay, round part of an underground stem that is there, uh, roots of some plants, like this, such as potatoes and other things sweet potatoes, okay. Krishna ground this root and drank it with milk. As said by the Malayali Sadhu, he had to take the root, mix it with milk and drink for 5 days. He did as the Malayali Sadhu said. Within a day, his piles improved. So he started to uh, uh, see improvement in his body after he started taking the medicine that the Sadhu told him. He was completely cured in 5 days. Exactly 5 days that the Sadhu told him. And he took it uh, with faith and that cured his piles. Krishna bid goodbye to his job as a rickshaw driver. Now he no longer wanted to work as a driver. Even more strange was what happened to me. Now the author says, I sensed something very strange that happened to uh, my own experience that I am going to share. Something happened to me, very strange uh, feeling. When we had dug up the root, I ate just a small piece of it, just to see how it tasted. It was slightly bitter. Now when they were digging this root, what did the uh, author do? The author picked one piece of it and he just wanted to taste it. So he took it and he just put it in his mouth. The root was very bitter. My right heel had been paining for quite some time. Whose right heel? The author's right heel was paining for uh, some time. This is a heel, okay. This portion is the heel, okay. The surgeon had said that it had to be surgically removed, but I noticed that a few days after I had eaten the piece of the root, the swelling had disappeared. Okay, now uh, once the author tasted that kind of a root, it was bitter, yes, but what did this, that, what was that strange thing that happened to him? The strange thing that happened to him is his right heel was paining. It was hurting for a very long time and when he went and visited the surgeon, the surgeon said it had to uh, be done surgically and some kind of a treatment has to be done. But the day after he ate that piece of root, he saw that kind of a swelling on his right heel had disappeared. How can I say that this was the effect of the creeper? Now just because he has eaten it, he cannot connect it to the swelling disappearing, isn't it? The swelling can disappear on its own. Sometimes we associate things like that, isn't it? Just because something happened, oh, maybe because of that. But whether it is truly because of that or no, we never know. So even the uh, author had a question in his mind. Is it the effect of the creeper 
or is it something else or am I assuming or connecting these two things? It could have been purely accidental, maybe, isn't it? It could have been accidental. They just hit it and maybe it cured or it may have been some other reason. Even if it was so, there are various types of swelling that occur in the human body and this particular plant may be effective on only some of them. So he said, all parts of our body we get swelling, isn't it? So this kripa that is there, it may cure swelling that is happening only on some parts of the body, may not be all. But who will find out that? How can you find out that? Who is going to do research in all these aspects? See, so that's what he asked. Who is going to do? Who is going to learn? Or who is going to tell people that this is for this, this is for this, or that is for that? Who says? Who is going to say is questioning? For people like Mara, research is of no importance at all. Mara never bothered about research and other things. Even that thought may not have occurred in his mind that I have to do some research on these creepers. Mara, is, uh, Mara lived his life. He knew some stories. He told people. Some people wanted to believe it. But now the author starts to believe it because though he considered Mara's, to be, Mara's stories may be true, may not be true, sometimes false or sometimes true, we don't know. But now uh, the effect of it is uh, showing on the author himself, isn't it? So he tries uh, to understand there is some effect of the creepers, but what kind of an effect that who will do the research, he asks. <laughs> Even the Malayali god man shared his knowledge with Krishna only because he was too old and weak or else he would have gone to the forest himself and given Krishna the medicine as a secret potion. Now, just because the Malayali sadhu was very old, he described the plant to Krishna. If not, if he was a very young and a healthy man, a fit man, he would have gone himself, where to the forest and taken that creeper and not told anybody which creeper it was. And he would have given, this is the secret medicine, go and take it. Just because he was old, uh, this kind of a finding came into uh, reality. One of the problems is that these native doctors believe that if they are, if they told others about their medicines, their medicines would, lo would lose their potency. So these native local doctors who were there, what did they believe? That they, they believe that I shouldn't uh, let others know what kind of a medicine I'm giving. Because see, if you see a very local community, they do believe in that doctor. And whatever he gives cures the people. So these native doctors, they believe if I uh, tell people about what kind of a medicine I'm giving them, it would lose the potency. What is that? Having some effect on your body. Now, when I give you some medicine, it should have some effect on your body, isn't it? It should cure you. Now, if I'm a native doctor, I believe what if I tell people or if I tell you, the medicine that I give you will not have an effect on your body. Okay? So, these native doctors believed that. But the Malayali sadhu there, because he was old, he let out this, uh, let out this uh, secret uh, ingredient of his for the curing of all these diseases. Because of this belief, India's native medicinal systems are on the verge of extinction. Okay, what's extinction? No longer in existence, no longer living. So, because of that kind of a belief that no native doctors. Now why, if you have knowledge, it is not to be kept for yourself. It is to be shared, isn't it? Nothing, you don't lose anything when you share knowledge. Rather, you become more knowledgeable. You try, you, if you continuously speaking on the same topic, it's likely that you remember it better. Isn't that true? Repeatedly, maybe you say a song. When you hear, just hear the starting uh, a tune of it, you can recall the song. That's how knowledge is. The more you share it, the more you remember it and the more you will practice it with you. Here, what was the problem? Because these native doctors didn't want to let out their secret, these kind of uh, knowledge about medicinal creepers is uh, fading away. It's going away. It's on the verge of extinction. Why? These old people who were there, they knew all about it. They didn't tell it to the next generation. The next generation completely has no idea about whatever it is. So that kind of a knowledge with them 
will go along with them. When they're dead and gone, that kind of a knowledge also goes with them. But had they shared it with the next generation, that generation would take it to the next generation and it would pass on and pass on for all the years to come. So something that we know, we also have to share it. Maybe it, it is not useful for us at the right moment. It may be useful maybe for the next generation to come. They may remember, okay, that happened there and that is the effect of uh, this or that is the cause and effect, the relationship that they share. Everything again, they can find out. Now, if you ask your, if you compare your grandparents' generation and if you compare our generation, how much knowledge do we have about these medicinal creepers? Grandparents may know, isn't it? They will even identify the plant properly. Can you identify? Can I identify? No. We can't do it. Our generation has become very advanced with what knowledge that they They possessed so many things. They knew how to make this hair oil uh, with mixing so many ingredients. They knew to make some kind of an oil which could heal your pain. Do we know that? No, we don't know. We just take a painkiller and finish it off. Isn't it? We do it. That's, that's become the life. Why has it become? Because that knowledge was not shared, not let out, not known. If you remember, if you ask at home, what does this plant do? Hey, that's none of your business. You can take it, just stay, do what I say. Sometimes don't you get that response. Just apply it. Just take it in the afternoon. Just eat it. That's it. You cannot ask out for any reasons. People willing to tell it, people will tell it. People not willing to tell it will say all these kinds of statements. So, uh, if you can find out uh, from your grandparents and great-grandparents if you have, uh, they will know much, much better than the grandparents. Grandparents will also know, but if you have great-grandparents, then please go and ask them uh, for some detail. Maybe if they tell you a full version of whatever it is, you can share it with uh, your friends, you can share it with your family, you can share it for the coming generation that uh, is there. So, that kind of a knowledge will remain. So, when they are there, it's, it's good that we make uh, or share or gather knowledge from them. Alright? So, here, uh, there is uh, on page 27, I want you to read that information or look up to the internet, go to some uh, YouTube uh, videos and see what kind of uh, plants do they use or what kind of an Ayurvedic medicine that they uh, tell us. So all this has been, why do they tell you, oh, you must stay healthy, you must do that, you must do this, you must keep your body fit. Why? Maybe there are, see there are always reasons and causes for it. That's why it, it shows its effects. So here I want you to uh, concentrate on gathering some information about uh, some medicinal creepers that are there. Tulsi for that matter. How much of knowledge do we know what Tulsi does to us? Even this uh, neem leaves or curry leaves all have their own properties. We know on, uh, on, a, on a surface we know the deeper knowledge we are unaware of it, unaware about it. We can study about it unless and until see we uh, go and experiment like the author to see whether the milk has hardened or no, we will really not know its exact uh, reason, isn't it? So we will have to uh, go. Your kind of an assignment for you is gather information now and keep it for yourself. Keep it for yourself. Uh, have this knowledge and you share it with others. All right. Okay, students. Uh, thank you for listening. I want you to read the lesson. I want you to read it at least twice. Uh, pick out the words that are there. Pick out the phrases that are there. New phrases that you have known especially the phrase cock and bull stories, the word bunkum, try to use it in your day-to-day -day, uh, conversation and that's how communication can be better. All right, thank you very much for listening. Uh, we shall meet soon.